doing an interior refresh on my 1970 Olds Rally 350 and as part of that I need to install a new headliner. I watched several YouTube videos on installing bow type headliners and I took a little bit from several of the videos and kind of put that together to to do what I'm going to do here with mine. When I remove the headliner bows I marked the position they were in and I also marked the hole they were in so I could put them back in the same place. I also gave them a quick scuff and a, and a spray paint. I laid the bows alongside the sheath that the bows slide into and then I cut the sheath back about halfway down past where the bows bend. I'm installing a new dome light and the new dome light kit comes with some pigtails that uh, connect to the uh, contacts for the light. So I went ahead and cut back on the wire because the wire is so stiff that I thought if I try to wad it up and push it up into the headliner that it may poke down and put a little bulge in my headliner. So I went ahead and cut the wire short. When installing the bows, I inserted the ends into the side holes and then rotated the bow up to the center. Then I trimmed back the sheath to allow the bow to clip into place without interference. In this photo you can see how far back I trimmed the bow sheath. Then you can also see the headliner rail where the headliner material will be wrapped around. You'll have to experiment a little bit with cutting back the sheath but be careful and take it in very small increments and what you do is you trim it and then pull it and see how it fits on the side. Make sure you can get it to fit without any wrinkles. I inserted the center bow first and after that I inserted the back two bows and then moved to the front two bows. I don't really think it makes any difference on the back two front two bows. I think it's probably a good idea to get that center bow in first. Before installing the front bows, I went ahead and cut a small slit in the headliner and pushed the dome light wires through. After installing all the bows, I pulled the headliner material up to the windshield and clipped it in place. And I'm not really trying to get it tight right now. I'm mostly just trying to get everything in place. And after clipping the front of the headliner in place, I went and did the same thing for the back. With this being my first headliner install, I spent quite a bit of time just getting used to what it was like to get it stretched and clipped into place and just kind of getting a feel for the headliner. So I spent a good three or four hours just messing around with the headliner pulling it and stretching it and clipping it in place. And the more I worked with it, the more familiar I got with it and I was able to start pulling some of the wrinkles out. And then once I kind of had it in place, then I started doing a little bit of trimming to get the excess material out of the way. And I started cutting a few reliefs where I could get it to stretch around the corners. One thing I discovered is I was able to pull the material and get it wrinkle free but when I tried to clip it in place, you know, I had an issue with the wrinkles coming back. So I felt like once I get the glue down and I'm able to glue the headliner in place where it'll stick and I can move to a different spot, I felt fairly comfortable that I was going to be able to get most of the wrinkles out. Once I had a certain comfort level with the headliner, I decided to go ahead and cover the sail panels. I placed the sail panel on the material so that the grain of the material ran vertical to the sail panel. And after that, I used masking tape and taped an outline of the sail panel onto the material so that I could get it back in the exact same spot. The tape also worked to keep me from getting glue where I didn't want it. Next I coated the sail panel board with, in its paper with glue. And don't be confused by this image because this panel belongs to the opposite side as the rest of the photos. I just didn't take a photo of the other panel. So <laughs> don't get confused and put the glue on the wrong side. 
And here I also coated the fabric with glue and I let it dry until it doesn't stick to my fingers. It's barely tacky, but the glue will not stick to my fingers. And here you can see after pressing the pieces together, I don't have a lot of excess glue or I don't want it. And uh, my thinking was that should be, make it easier to manipulate the fabric when I wrap it around the board. Once the pieces are glued together, I let it sit up for about an hour before moving forward. With my 1970 Cutlass, there are two areas that won't wrap around behind on the sail panel board. When you install the sail panel, those two areas will wrap around the headliner rail. Here you can see two areas that aren't glued, and uh, those areas will wrap around the headliner rail when we install the sail panels in the car. And here the sail panels are ready to install. Before gluing the headliner in place, I went ahead and cleaned up all the uh, rubber wind lace trim. This is the trim that fits over the top of the headliner and over the top of the headliner rail. I want to make sure that was clean as I could possibly get it. Also went ahead and cleaned the rear view mirror and, and uh, some other pieces that I needed to install. All right, showtime. Put some plastic over the dash in case I drip some contact cement onto the dash. And those blue plastic body tools, I mean, those are mandatory. You at least got to have one with a small flat edge on one end and then a hook on the other end so you can get in and really tuck the headliner in place around that headliner rail. After you apply the contact cement to the headliner rail, and the headliner material, let it dry until it's dry to the touch. And then when you press it up into place, it's going to grab pretty well. And I went ahead and I put a bunch of clips across the front because I know my working time for the other areas is, you know, probably 30 minutes. So that gave me a lot of clamping force and time to really let the glue grab the material. After having the headliner clipped in place for a couple days, when removing the clips to apply the contact cement, it leaves a nice crease there so you know exactly where to put your contact cement. And once I had the back glued and clipped in place, I went ahead and let it sit up for 30 minutes before uh, starting to pull on the sides to tighten up the headliner. Before gluing the sides in place, I took some masking tape and I taped the areas where the uh, shoulder belt mount is and where the two front clips are. That way it'll make it easier for me to find them once everything's glued up. And just like the front and back, when I'm clipping the sides, it leaves a nice crease so you know just exactly where to put your contact cement. And you'll want to apply your contact cement on the front and the back of the headliner rail. There's no headliner rail up in the windshield pillar. So just go ahead and apply your contact cement to the pillar and then once you start tightening it up just go ahead and stick the headliner right to the pillar. And just like the front and back I applied plenty of clips to make sure there was a good bite on the headliner rail. And After gluing the headliner in place I went ahead and used the scissors and trimmed off all the excess material. And I used that blue plastic body tool and I took the hooked end 
and I tucked the material up on the back side of the headliner rail to make sure it was secured well. My sail panels came with four pieces of Velcro and so what I did is I placed the Velcro, two pieces on each side on those raised sections and uh, when I press the sail panels into place those will help secure them. I installed the package tray next because the sail panels will go over the top of the ends of the package tray that are kicked up. In the places where the sail panel material will wrap over the top of the headliner, you'll need to apply some glue to the headliner so the sail panel material has something to grab onto. And after the sail panels were installed, I left, I left the clips in place for about a half an hour to let the glue set up for a while before applying the wind lace. After giving the contact cement some time to set up, I then removed all the clips and then started installing the wind lace. I know the headliner doesn't look real tight there, but if you have real shallow wrinkles like that, when you apply some heat, those will tighten up quite a bit. Once everything was in place, I let it all sit for 24 hours to give the contact cement plenty of time to cure. Here I'm feeling for the visor mount holes and after letting it sit for 24 hours I went ahead and started installing all the hardware. After installing the hardware, I went ahead and glued down the front edge of the package tray. After installing all the hardware, the rear view mirror, the visor mounts, the shoulder belts, the dome light, this is what we have. After all the hardware was installed, I took a hair dryer, put it on high, 
and slowly start working the wrinkles out. And you, you put the heat on the wrinkles and just keep an eye on it and they'll start to close up. Alright, my first headliner installed. Is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. But, you know, I did it myself. Didn't cost me anything and uh, I'm not sure I'll ever do another one, but if I do, I'd probably do a better job.